What up guys, that comic awesome here doing another review, doing Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man number 303. And this series is wonderful. Um, Chip Zdarsky's doing a really good job on it. Um, this story arc had me a little worried um, with its time travel bits, but now that, like this issue, um, really cleared it up for me. It really helped me kind of grasp what they were doing. Although in the first page, um, the horrible, horrible editors, uh, catch up, uh, there is two lines that they make. They think that it's something's going to be addressed and then it never is never. So, uh, what they do is, uh, Spider-Man, his sister, Teresa, and um, J. Jonah Jameson travel to the past with the knowledge that nothing they do in this past will ever affect their present. So they go back in time to try and stop an alien invasion of sentient uh, like artificial intelligence uh, brought on by the Tinkerer. So... Uh, J. Joe and Jameson is trying to track down the tr uh, the Tinkerer. Uh, they know he's going to rob a bank at some point. Uh, Spider-Man teams up with uh, his younger self to kind of stop some major villains here and there. And uh, Teresa goes on uh, the hunt for some information, which is pretty much where we, we pick up. So you get this god-awful catch-up page. Seriously, like, I don't understand... This is not the tone of the book. This is not Squirrel Girl. This is not America. This is not any of those garbage series. This does not need to be talked about, you know, like this. Give me a standard catch-up page that I can actually get a little bit of information off of. This is these are the lines that um that does that, that make zero sense. So um uh, it says, you know, but Teresa already uncovered some secrets on her own. Uh, yeah, she found out she's Peter Parker's real sister. It's like, how does that help uh, them stop the Green Goblin or the Tinkerer? And it says, turn the page and find out. I'm going to spo spoiler alert. It doesn't. It has nothing to do. They make it seem like, okay, that part of the story has something to do with them stopping uh, the invasion or them stopping uh, the Green Goblin. It doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do with that. Um, also, a side note, um, <clears throat> uh, in the in the editor's notes here, you have uh, the fact that the Green Goblin finds out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man by accident, or not by accident, uh, through J. Jonah Jameson's past self, um, as J.J. let it slide to his past self that Parker was Spider-Man, uh, kind of being ambitious, uh, the past J. Jonah Jameson wrote a story, not publishing it, but it was just on his computer, uh, Norman Osborn sees it, and then finds out the secret. I don't know if there is any correlation between now and both of the major Spider-Man series, a form of Norman Osborn, within the same, uh, issue structures, finds out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man and has a vendetta, it just seems a little more than a coincidence, and I wonder if something is paying out, uh, will pay out from that. So we kind of get um, the catch-up, you know, this is, again, this is the page, I guess, that it was supposed to be, you know, oh, this is how her being uh, his sister helps. Uh, they, um, so they're looking for the tinker, um, they can't find it. Peter goes back to uh, Aunt May's house, finds it trash, just sees this um, pumpkin um, pumpkin drawing. He gets a phone call uh, from the goblin, like, hey, you know, I know who you are, Peter Parker, blah, 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 blah. Um, and meet me, you know, meet me at this, uh, on the bridge. So he's there. Uh, he has Peter, uh, past Peter, tied up. He uh, has Aunt May... Uh, tied up so obviously it's going to be a which one will you save type situation um you know and in that 
like Teresa calls him and he's like, and she's like, look, you know, we're tracking down the tank where he attacked earlier than, than he was supposed to. Um, and he's like, okay, well, I'll be there. He's like, no, 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 you take care of, um, the tinker. Um, you know, you take care of the green goblin. We have the tinker. Just trust us, which that was always a big problem of Spider-Man and Peter Parker's trusting others. He always felt like he had to do more on his own. And so he kind of lets them, you know, go about, you know, their, uh, their task. Uh, meanwhile, there are some some interesting thoughts here too, where Norman, you know, pretty much tells Pete, he's like, "Well, if your aunt in the future didn't know who you were, and now she does, like, does that mean when you go to the future, she's going to be dead, or is she just going to, you know, not exist or whatever?" Kind of hinting that he was going to, you know, pretty much kill her. So, um, some really good fight stuff, and I like this too, where. Uh, again, Pete's a little flustered, so he's kind of going after the Green Goblin, and he, man, the Green Goblin maneuvers, Norman maneuvers, and Pete says here, um, you know, what, can't, uh, can't course correct, so he already kind of, like, swung, and that allowed Norman to kind of get the jump on him. I enjoyed that. Uh, meanwhile, there's, uh, an explosion, uh, at the Tinkerer's thing. This is part, this robot here is the the scout of the alien species that is going to come to Earth and destroy it. Um, but what it does is gives them the opportunity to uh, save themselves. So he's like, here, this is all the information you need to to stop the invasion. It won't harm them. It, it'll just deter them from attacking. Which, now I get why they went to the past. This makes this whole story. So they weren't going back to change the timeline. They were going back to try and get information <clears throat> on how to uh, stop, maybe, uh, you know, give them an edge on the uh, the future kind of thing. Uh, meanwhile, uh, <laughs> I didn't understand this. So Norman's going to blow up Aunt May. Uh, he has a young Pete that he's kind of stringing along and he blows, so he, he detonates, and it doesn't, like, blow her up. It kind of just, like, whoop. Like, I don't understand these couple pages. So he breaks out, slides, and see, when I first saw this, I thought for sure this was going to be, like, a Gwen Stacy situation. And I'm 99% sure that's what they wanted you to think. Um, so you see, like the web shooter you see his face and he's like i'm prepared and like you see you know aunt may falling and you see it you know stick and then of course you see her like head down and you're like ooh, that's not gonna be good for aunt may but then it turns out he made a net and she dropped in it um i don't want to like spoil too much but there's a really touching scene where uh Pete and Teresa are kind of having a conversation um, where he's like, look, I felt so bad. He's like, I wanted to try and give the younger me in this timeline a little bit of an edge. So I was helping him out. But if anything, I I pretty much ruined what was supposed to be kind of like the happy time of me being Spider-Man. He's like, if, you know, I have to sit here and he has to know that like all of this, this crap is ahead of him. Like I know how bad his life is going to be. And of course, uh, you know, little little Pete overhears that and, uh, you know, kind of makes some decisions uh, accordingly. Um, definitely, definitely start reading this. Like, it's, it's very good. I mean, it's entertaining. It has uh, Spider-Man being Spider-Man and not, like, super wussy, which I will, you know... Uh, everybody, you know, earmuffs on this, uh, you know, Dan Slott in the, in this last, uh, the Red Goblin kind of run, uh, the going down swing, I will say, uh, has been very well. This is very good as well. Definitely read it. I like it. You should like it. Subscribe for here. Watch some more videos. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you next time.